putting in the time and miles is far from glamorous. Ask anyone who's been there. There are no secrets and absolutely no shortcuts. To compete on the world stage, the best triathletes train upwards of 30 hours a week, logging mind-numbing amounts of miles. The recipe for success is a simple one. Get up early every day and swim until you have goggle marks around your eyes and everything you own smells like chlorine. Stay on your bike until you've climbed every mountain in your zip code and run until you can't run another step. Then repeat. At the age of 31, Marinda Carfrey is now one of the best female triathletes in the world and the best pure runner in her sport. She grew up in Australia and pursued an athletic career as a basketball player. But it wasn't until she was 19 years old that she found the sport that would make her famous. It is now early in the 2012 season. Temperatures are in the 30s and Boulder, Colorado is dusted in snow. After six weeks of minimal training to help her body recover from the Ironman, Marinda Carfrey is now back at it. She has agreed to give us a peek behind the curtain as she takes us through her build-up to racing a full Ironman in Melbourne, Australia. 2.4 miles of swimming, 112 miles of cycling, followed by 26.2 miles of running. The ultimate goal is not just to qualify for the Ironman World Championship in October, it's to go back and win. training day and we're uh, in the off season a little bit but you still got an Ironman coming up in three months or so so what are we gonna see today yeah I mean it's it's the height of the off season for me um, I just came off uh, a two-week complete break a uh, holiday in the Cayman Islands which was awesome and uh, yeah as you said it's time to, to get back to work I'm well and truly ready I'm mentally ready after Kona it's two months post Kona now so yeah I mean the off season looks a lot different to, to the main season. Obviously, you're still doing a little bit of swim, bike, run, but it's nowhere near the hours that you'll do when you're getting ready for a big race. And, and certainly, this time of year, you know, you want to take the downtime and you want to take, you know, time to build up and work on the weaknesses and, and sort of take a step back from the, you know, the crazy 30 plus hour training week that that will be inevitable. <laughs> That's coming in, in a month or a month and a half. But um, yeah, I mean, today we're going to do Sue. Um, I swim at flat irons. After that, we're going to shoot a few hoops. Um, back to your roots. Back to my roots, yeah, yeah. which uh, it's always fun. I mean, I, I never shoot the basketball during the season, um, but this time of year, you have flexibility to do things like that and, and have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, you're keeping um, it fun so you're not burning out. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, after that, just do a little bit of a run, nothing too crazy. I like to do a little bit of change of pace stuff in the off season, but nothing on the clock. So you know, I'm not wearing my Garmin or you know whatever to tell me how fast I'm going. That's not important at this time of the year. It's more all on feel and, and just getting moving again. And so let's talk a little bit of recovery. So nutrition wise, when you're talking recovery, what, what is that? What is that for you? Yeah, for me, I mean, um, food obviously mm -hmm. is very important. I like to get in some nutrients immediately after a workout. Um, you know, there's a number of choices you can make when you when you you're going for a post training session um, meal. And I could stop by a shop and grab some chocolate milk or something like that. Sure. I mean, you know, that's a really good source of um, protein, carbohydrates, uh, and um, electrolyte. Um, all in one. All in one hit. And it's easy to pick up from the grocery store or from the convenience shop. Even when you're out on a ride, it's good to be able to go and grab, you know, a chocolate milk. I mean, a lot of triathletes uh, believe in chocolate milk and I'm definitely a firm believer in something that's great for recovery. All right, so we're, we're ready to get going. Yeah, it's time to go. Um, go for a swim and uh, get ready for the day. All right, let's go. All right. There's a full day of training and recovery ahead of her as she gathers her gear. The first stop? 
the flat irons pool and a full hour swim workout with Coach Monica. We spent the morning catching up with Marinda Carfrey on her season plans before heading off for a one hour swim session followed by a little basketball. Marinda's 2012 season has officially started. Since she holds the Ironman Marathon course record, Carfrey is considered the best runner in long distance triathlon. But to stay at the top and the win again at the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii, she knows she can't have a weak link. Carfrey knows that the other pro women will be faster than ever before. And everyone will be upping the ante to be at their very best in Kona. You know, the world around us, you can't, you know, have any impact on what other women are doing and how fast they're going to go, but, you know, I think the more you focus on yourself and the more you forget about everybody else, then the better you are able to improve every year and deal with what comes on race day. And I think I've gotten to a point, I've raced three Konas now, that I'm starting to think, okay, well, you know, I need to look closer into my nutrition. Um, certainly bike fit is something that we've really worked on. Um, I think when you look at my race in Kona, there's not much more time you could get out of my run. There's probably not much more time you could get out of my swim. But there's a lot of time that, that I can hopefully make up on the bike. So, you know, now I have a little team helping me figure out my best possible position, um, you know, how we're going to mount hydration on my bike, what tires to run, what wheels to run. Now, you know, I'm at the point, I'm at the pointy end of the field and, and I'm looking for one percenters. Probably Kona's probably the easiest race not to lose focus because it is a race that you think about non-stop in training. It's, you know, you visualize those hard points, you visualize the good, the good points um, all the time in training. So, you know, inevitably you're gonna have dark periods. There's gonna be voices in the back of your head screaming to stop, screaming that it's too hard, screaming that you can't go any further. Uh, but I mean, I've, I've never given up anything. Um, and I think, you know, the pain of giving in or you know taking your foot off the gas and knowing that you gave in is far worse than what you have to go through in any race at, at any point in time so I mean I just know that I would prefer to just put it all out there and then at the end of the day I can I can sleep well at night knowing that I did everything that I, I could do Monica yes. tell us a little bit about what our swimmers are doing today Okay, so since it's December, it's early season, so I try not to make it too hard, too easy, so something aerobic, but also change of speed, change of stroke. So today we're doing IM slash freestyle. So we basically start at an, um, three 100 IMs where you go the same pace throughout, a little easy interval, and then we'll go three 200s free where the pace changes, going easy, moderate, a little quicker, not fast, but quicker. And then again, more I am, more freestyle, back and forth. Not going anaerobic, but where you're, you know, have a little, you know, your heart rate's up a bit. Sure. But then coming back down where you can recover possibly on the IMs, but still working different muscles when you're doing fly back and breast. What's interesting is in the Ironman and the other race she's doing, it's all freestyle. Mm -hmm. Here they're doing some butterfly, backstroke, uh, breaststroke. Is that to just build different muscles? Is it just to give variety just so you don't variety, get... variety, early season. You know, I mean, they've, they've probably taken a good break after, um, you know, they're racing and vacationing. So, you know, I just try to mix it up, make it fun, not so boring. I mean, because it's so repetitive during the season that you want to make, make it more, you know, splitting, split it up with different strokes, different times, just more fun. Perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. After a quick break to refuel with chocolate milk on the pool deck, Marinda heads back to her roots. A shoot around in the Flatirons gym with Tim O'Donnell. Yeah, I can't do any of that fancy stuff. 
followed my older brothers into basketball when I was about seven. And I played under 10s, you yeah. know, that have that mini ball half court situation. Under 12, I represented my city, I guess. And then sort of I started to learn about the Olympics and the whole world of, oh, you can actually be an athlete for a living. That's when the sort of Olympic dream was awoken. And it sure. was Olympic dream for basketball. Right. And, you know, I was, I didn't have a much prospect of being a tall person. <laughs> My mum and dad aren't, aren't the tallest people, um, but I certainly hoped to be taller than 5'3", but um, that didn't happen. Right before I started university, I started to do some off-season training, so strength training, uh, running training to help basketball. Sure. And the guy I started training with happened to also coach triathletes. At the end of that year, um, that coach just said to me, you know, you should give triathlon a go. Like. I think you're you look great running. I mean, you're a natural. You should you should give it a try. Got a bike. I think maybe six months later, um, my basketball coach, who had put hours of training into me, he was heartbroken that I was moving away from basketball. But he was the guy who put up money for my first bike. He said, you know, if this is what you want to do, then I believe in you. But yeah, so that was the start. She's number 23 from Australia, starting guard, averaging 18.4 points per game, Verinda Carfrank. <sighs> oh, you hit the shot. <laughs> the first workout of the day is in the books. Next up is lunch and recovery as she prepares for a late afternoon run. After a morning filled with swimming, Marinda heads to lunch at Jet's Espresseria, a casual spot where we can get her thoughts on the nutrition of recovery. Just stringing together workouts and stringing together recovery. Mm -hmm. You can't be thinking about something three months, six months, nine months down the line. You think about today. Mm -hmm. So, how important is it, and for your recovery after each and every workout, and take us through what that recovery entails? Yeah, I mean, you know, the best triathletes, the best athletes in the world, are only as good as how they can recover or how their body is able to recover after every session. Right. So, in that. You know, if you're recovering better, if you're doing all the right things, then you're able to get more out of your body in the next session, in the next day, in you know, the next uh, period of time. So most professional athletes are on top of it because it's so important. And what is your go-to? Your my go -to. go to for recovery? My go to for recovery? Uh, just good food. I mean, for the most part, you know, good natural foods. Um, yeah, I mean, I've said it before, chocolate milk is, is, a, is a good, easy option. You can get it from a supermarket, you can get it from a gas station. It's got a great mix of, uh, of carbohydrate and, and protein. Um, it's also got your electrolytes, your mm -hmm. sodium, potassium, um, all those things that you, you lose when you're sweating. So, I mean, it's a, it's a great little formula um, and, it, you know, all natural. In simple. Simple, yeah. Low Love fat, it. great, great. Rest of the day. And then we're taking our, doing our after now. Yep. And then now you've got another workout coming up. What's next? Yeah, I mean, my after is, you know, there are, there are a number of afters for me between <laughs> sessions. Yeah. And, you know, I usually have a decent session in the morning and then I'd have a meal sort of similar right. to this. And then I'd go off for my afternoon session. I need to be adequately fueled for that afternoon session right. so that I can get through it and get through it properly. I'm just heading out for a relatively easy run. I might do a few um, pickups, so change of speed work. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people worry about eating and exercising, but I, in fact, try and train my belly to be able to handle eating food and then training because when you're doing endurance fence of, you know, six, seven, eight, nine hours, you need to be able to stomach and process food while you're still exercising. So I think the more you practice that um, in training, the better you become on race day. It helps your stomach absorb the nutrients across the stomach wall, and I think that 
you know, that's so important when it comes to those endurance events, which is what, you know, I specialize in. Perfect. Yeah. The end of the 2011 season proved that Marinda's running was better than ever. She went to the High V 5150 event in Iowa, and even though she had been putting in long running miles to get ready for the Ironman Marathon, she surprised everyone by running through the elite women's field and finishing second overall. Then she went to Kona and broke her own Ironman Marathon course record by a minute and 23 seconds, running an impressive 2.52.09. Today, Marinda is doing a six mile training run on the roads just north of the Boulder Reservoir. The air is cold and there's snow on the ground, but Marinda knows that to improve, she has to brave even the toughest conditions during the early season and build her base by putting in the hard miles. What have you learned about yourself through this journey? From basketball player to you know, ITU triathlete to world champion. What have I learned about myself? Um, that I love winning <laughs> um, and I'll do anything, yeah. just about anything to get there. Yeah. Um, and I just love the sport. I love being able to do what I do every day. Um, I think the more I look around and see other athletes out there, there are so many athletes that don't love it. You know, they, they complain, it's hard, it's this, it's that. And you know, at the end of the day, you know, you make a bit of money, you're physically active. I mean, you, you know, at some points may be able to inspire other people to get out and exercise as well. I mean, I just truly love triathlon. I, I like training. You know, there's certainly days where I, you know, throw a tantrum and don't want to do anything, but I still will go out and do it. And at the end of the day, I feel good about myself for doing, sticking it out and, and, you know, week in, week out, putting in the work that, you know, I need to put in to, to get the results. And the results are worth it. What were your thoughts coming down Elite Drive, knowing that you're one of the few people who's won that race? And how did that change the, the change your world? Yeah, I mean, my world was <laughs> kind of tipped upside down after winning that title. I really can't articulate what it feels like to run down Elite Drive in first place, run down Polani Drive, and then make the right hand turn onto Elite. I mean, for me, it's more. Um, voices and faces that stand out in the crowd, you know, for people who have supported you for many years, sponsors, um, friends, family, I mean, you know, they, those faces kind of just stick out in the crowd of people you recognize and, and, you know, it's, it's just such an exciting feeling to be able to share that victory with so many people. And I don't know, I mean, you, uh, yeah, I lost, I'm lost for words to describe it. It's just amazing. The fourth event for any triathlete is recovery. Marinda's last session of the day is at the All Sports Recovery Club, where we get a chance to see up close and personal how a world champion recovers from a long day of training. Oh, uh, this is like the greatest thing in the world. After a day spent running and swimming, Marinda heads to the All Sports Recovery Club. Hi, I'm Marinda Carfrey, and this is my after. For any world-class athlete, the key to consistent performance is consistent preparation. To be able to get up every morning and string together great training days, recovery is the key. Marinda starts off with a one hour massage to work out the lactic acid buildup and to keep her body fresh. Then Rini gives us a guided tour of the facility. This is your happy place. This is my happy place, a one stop <laughs> recovery shop. Uh, I do my tri massage here, I see um, uh, Josh Shadle for, for massage here. 
in Boulder, and then there's also right next door is uh, the All Sports Recovery Club. And how often do you come here? You know, massage for me during the season is important. I, I normally try and get t twice a week, at least twice a week. I mean, in the off season, maybe it's more like once a week, but you, you know, when I'm really ramping up those yeah. Ks, you need to get in two times a week. Uh, just to make sure everything's aligned and you don't have anything too tight because you yeah, know that's when you get injuries so yeah I mean that I, I actually have my own set of Normatec boots at home so I, I Normatec at home but um, yeah there's an ice bath here at the recovery club so if I'm here a little ice bath this wouldn't be as much fun as a Normatec no. so I'm imagining that this is Getting in is the hardest part. Yeah, you know, but you know, uh, you know, it's sort of a love-hate relationship that I have with ice icing after workouts. Um, you hop in, obviously, it's horrible hopping in, yeah. um, but you know, once a few minutes have passed, you're almost numb, and you you know, it's still cold, but you don't really notice the the pain. It's not hurting, and then when you hop out, just the amount it helps those muscles recover is unbelievable, and it's definitely worth the pain. It just flushes everything. Yeah, it flushes everything out. So. I mean, I you know, highly recommend ice baths uh, cool. for anyone who's training really hard. Well, give us the rest of the tour. Ice baths, one of many tools they have here at All Sports Recovery Club. But my favorite tool, and I'm going to show you, uh -huh. <laughs> is uh, the Normatec MVP boots. All right, Rennie, this is the best after mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Tell me about these things. So these are the Normatec uh, MVP boots. They um, basically are sort of an active compression. So. Okay. You know, I, I use, you know, my CEP compression tights and, and, uh, and socks for, you know, when I'm up and about. But if I have time to sit down in front of the TV and relax, then these are the go-to go -to tool. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they definitely help flush all that blood out that's, um, that's built up lactic acid throughout your workout. So, um, yeah, I mean, I love this one. I, I didn't make you hop in the ice bath tonight, but... Um, I, I saved you for uh, <laughs> saved you. it for the best thank you. for thank the you best the best part the the Normatec boots and a little bit of TV but you know thanks for coming and checking out my after um, I appreciate you guys hanging out in Boulder for the day we loved it thanks so much no worries although Marinda is at the very top of the sport she hasn't forgotten what it was like to be a beginner what's your message for for brand new people <laughs> trying to get into our sport or thinking about getting in the trial yeah I mean. <laughs> just to be, have fun with it. I mean, yeah, you know, once you get to our level, it becomes more serious mm -hmm. and, and recovery is important. You know, all the little bits and pieces are important, but if you're a beginner, go out and enjoy running with your friends, join a master swim program. Um, and, and if you miss a session, if you've got kids and husbands and whatever, and, and you, you can't get out and train one day, it's okay. You're not trying to be a world champion. You're just trying to enjoy life, be healthy, and, um, yeah, I mean, don't take it too seriously, I think, is the main thing I, I want to tell newbies. Marinda Carfrey grew up dreaming to be a professional athlete. She discovered triathlon and realized early on that this sport was absolutely perfect for her. She loves the triathlon lifestyle. She loves the training. She loves the racing. And most importantly, she loves the winning. And can't wait to go back to Kona to get another shot at the Ironman World Championship.